Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Wars End History Story. This week I thought as we are so close to Christmas that I would cover a few little stories of Christmas in Wars End in past times. I hope you will enjoy it and find it interesting. And of course I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. As with all the other videos covering mixed stories, they will be from various years and are not in any particular order. And all of the pictures used in this video will be Christmas or snow themed. In 1931, several applications were made at the police court for licenses to be able to show films on Christmas Day. The article I read stated that the talkies were coming towards end and several cinemas wanted to show them on Christmas Day night. The Borough, the Tyne, the Queen's and the Pearl Cinema were all granted a licence for 6.30pm to 10.45pm. There are no details of what films they would be showing and I do wonder if anyone went out to see them on Christmas night. And just as a little point of interest, I believe that the first talking picture was The Jazz Singer in 1927. Once upon a time in Wall's End, the Christmas tree used to stand on Station Road outside of St Luke's Church. It was more often than not a gift from the Wall's End Rotary Club, and in 1953 it made it into the newspapers when the lights were switched on for the first time on December the 18th. I don't know how many years this was the location for the Christmas tree, but I did find details of it from 1953 right up until the 1960s. And talking about this tree made me remember what I used to call the co-op trees. It never really felt like Christmas until those trees appeared on that little ledge above the shop windows in the forum. I know that this is not the best photo, but it was the only one that I could find where at least one of the trees was visible. And yes, that is the late Queen Elizabeth in a car driving down Station Road. Well, obviously she isn't driving. In 1876, the choir of the Primitive Methodist Church walked round the streets of War's End on Christmas Day morning, singing Christmas carols. This was something that they apparently did every year. And I have to admit that I would have loved to have seen this. It must have been lovely to hear songs in the street on Christmas Day. After the choir had finished singing, they would then head to the church hall for what was described as a good breakfast. And in the afternoon, a public tea would be held in the hall, which was always said to be well attended. It does seem strange in some ways to see so many public teas that were held in various different places in Wall's End in the 17 and 1800s. But of course, back then, Christmas was not the same as it is today, where it's more based around family gatherings. And some of the other Christmas Day teas that I did find details of were one where 250 children had tea in the co-op hall in 1887 and another, also in 1887, was held in the Wall's End Cafe in connection with St Luke's Sunday School. And money was also often given to those who were less well off. And in 1876, the Reverend Wilson handed out a share of £20 to the local children. Now this may not sound like a lot to us, but that £20 then would be worth almost £3,000 in today's money, so it was a very generous donation, and it had been given by Mrs Leslie, who lived in Wall's End House. And it would seem that this became an annual thing for a couple of years, as the money was still being shared out in 1879. Mrs. Leslie was the wife of Andrew Leslie of Hawthorne Leslie Shipbuilders, who had lived in Wall's End House, the one-time home of John Buddle, for several years. Of course, it wasn't always good stories, as in 1876, a man who I will simply call Francis tried to break into somebody's house on Christmas Day, but he was caught by the people living in the house at the time, and he was arrested and taken to the police station. I didn't find any follow-up stories, so I sadly don't know what happened to him after this. And luckily, this was the only story that I found like this while researching the Christmas tales. In 1894, a Christmas football match took place in Wall's End between Wall's End Celtic and Brighton. It was said there was a good crowd of spectators to watch the match. 
Brighton were a man down when they arrived but were able to find a substitute in Wall's End on their arrival. The match went well until half time when Wall's End Celtic were leading one goal to nil. But it seems that Brighton picked up in the second half and Wall's End Celtic seemed to find themselves under attack with the match ending Wall's End Celtic 1 and Brighton 2. And I bet a few spectators wished they had stayed home after that result. In 1889, the members of the Wall's End Help Myself Society had their Christmas supper at the lecture hall in the Wall's End Cafe. There was a very good turnout and the members and their families danced until midnight. I have included this little story as I have tried to find out what the Help Myself Society was, but I have not really been able to find any details so i'm hoping that someone listening knows something about this and can let me know what they did christmas in wars end in 1891 it must have been a very cold one as it was stated in one newspaper article that the ponds were frozen and the people of wars end had taken advantage of this and had been skating on them i have been trying to work out where these ponds would have been in 1891, there was no Wall's End Park or access to the hall grounds, and the only areas of water that I can think of were the reservoirs for the collieries, so I was assuming that these must have been the ponds that they meant. In 1884, the Committee for Wall's End had been helping with free dinners for the poor of Wall's End, and had been making plans to provide breakfast and dinner for the children on Christmas Day and also on New Year's Day. They had also been aware that some of the children did not have shoes, so they planned to buy them clogs. The dinner planned was to be roast beef and plum pudding. A lot of the local firms were making donations towards the cost of the meals and the clogs, and J.B. Hunter personally donated £5, and the workers at Swan Hunters donated £9. Many others donated anything from 5 shillings up to £3. And although I didn't find any other articles about this, I would have assumed that it would have been a great success. In 1917, a list of shipyard holidays was printed in the papers, which also included details for Haggis Rope Works. Haggis, Parsons Marine, North East Marine and Wall's End Slipway were the lucky ones, as they had three days off both Christmas week and New Year's week. Swan Hunters and the Tyne Iron Shipbuilding Company only had Christmas Day off, but they did get two days off at New Year. In 1865, an article appeared in the newspapers discussing the Christmas decorations in St. Peter's Church, which at the time was more simply known as Wall's End Church. It was said that there was no church in the area more beautifully and tastefully decorated than this one. The work, it said, showed how well the town could work together to create such a display when many of its people were poor and unable to make great donations towards it. The article went on to state that it was a church well worth a visit. And it was also described as a country church, which of course in 1865 would have been a fair description, as War's End was yet to grow into the town we see today. In 1881, the Presbyterian Church on War's End High Street held their Christmas festival at the Co-op Hall on Carville Road. It was decided that this location was more suitable since the number of those wishing to intend had increased a lot over recent years. The article stated that the tea was excellent, however, they didn't actually say what food was served. And afterwards, a public meeting was held by the Reverend Stewart, and the Sunday School report was read out, which was said to be very good for the area at the time. And in the evening, the children from the Sunday School recited several poems, and they also had what can only be described as short plays, one of which was called The Trial of Ignorance. Also included in the entertainment was singing from the choir and it was said to be a very successful day. A strange little article appeared in the papers in 1954. It was discussing the post being sent from War's End to other areas for Christmas. 
The postmaster of War's End said that the parcels and letters were not affecting the pools coupons being sent in on time, and that so far this year he had not seen a single letter addressed to Santa Claus. He felt that now the children got to see Santa in various shops during December, they no longer wanted to write to him. I don't recall ever posting a letter to Santa. I always wrote mine, then put it on the fire to send it up the chimney to Santa in the smoke, because, after all, he would be bringing my presents down that very same chimney on Christmas Eve, or so I was told. On Christmas Day in 1957, one little girl was born at the Green Hospital in War's End. She was one of the first babies to be born in the country. I believe the article states that she was born at four minutes past midnight and was born on the same day as her father. She was to be called Christine, but I won't add any surnames. But who knows, maybe Christine is out there listening to this story. Of course, there are many other things I could mention about Christmas in War's End in past times, but I thought I would end with a little story from 1950, where the managing director of Victor Products in War's End announced to his staff, while stood in front of their 30-foot-high Christmas tree, that he would be putting £10,000 worth of his own personal shares into a pension scheme for his staff. This, it seems, was his Christmas gift to his staff. The scheme would work on the basis that a third of all future profits would be paid into the pension fund and that all money would be paid in by the company and the staff would not need to pay anything towards it at all. However, if there were no profits, there would be no money paid into the pension fund. So it seemed to be a way to obviously make them work harder. I sadly have no way of knowing how well this worked, but hopefully the staff did end up with something from the fund when they reached retirement age. I do hope that you have enjoyed this little selection of World's End Christmas stories and that you have enjoyed looking at some of the photos of Christmas trees, Santa Clauses, snowmen, etc. just to make the video a little bit more Christmassy. And I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.